Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world and we're looking now at solving equations where the pronumeral or letter is on both sides of the equations. So it's very similar to what we did in our last lesson. There's just one extra step. And that is, first, you have to get the pronumeral on one side. So remember, pronumeral is letter. So how do we do that? So what we do is by subtracting the one with the lowest coefficient. So remember that coefficient means number in front of. So let's look at the type of question that we're doing. So let's start off with an easy one. 7x plus, let's say, 9 equals uh, 15x minus, I know, 42. So this has pronumeral on both sides of the equation. So the first step is I'm going to subtract the one with the lowest coefficient. So the pronumeral here is x. This one has the lowest coefficient. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. So 7x minus 7x is 0. So on this side I just have 9 equals 15x minus 7x is 8x minus 42. Now this looks just like the equations we did in the previous lesson. So you know the drill, I add 42 to both sides and I get 51 equals 8x. Then I divide each side by 8 and I get x equals 6.375 or 6 and 3 eighths. How simple was that? Let's look at another example. So this one I'm going to do with brackets, which we also looked at in previous lessons. So let's have 7 times 3x minus 8 equals 5 times 4x plus 12. Okay. Now when you have x on both sides of the equation, in this case we do that, but we have brackets involved in the equation, we have no choice but to expand the brackets first, just like we did in the previous lesson. So 7 times 3x is 21x, 7 times 8 is 56, positive times a negative, negative. Do the same on the other side, 5 times 4x is 20x, 5 times 12 is 60, positive times by a positive is obviously positive. Now it looks just like the previous example, we subtract the x with the lowest coefficient, so I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides. I'm left with x minus 56 equals 60. Add 56 to both sides because, again, I'm going to want to undo what has already been done to x. So then I'm just left with x is 116. Once again, this is the only solution. I can check it by substituting into this equation here, so I can put on my calculator 7 times times 116 minus 8 and I can also put on my calculator 5 multiplied by 4 times 116 plus 12 and see if I get the same answer. So if I put these in my calculator both times I get the answer 2380. So these are in fact equal, so therefore I have solved the equation. When I substitute x equals 116, this becomes a true statement. So now we're going to look at practical applications. So in this section what we're going to do is use formula that are well known to solve equations. So I've given you the formula in black there, how you convert from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So you just put in a number for degrees Celsius into that formula. It'll tell you what the equivalent is in degrees Fahrenheit. So if we are asked the question here, what is 100 degrees Fahrenheit in degrees Celsius? So we're asked to substitute F equals 100. That's what F is, degrees Fahrenheit, equals 9 over 5C plus 32. So this is just another linear equation that we've been solving. Now, some people, they look at equations like this, they freak out. They're like, oh my God, what do I do? Well, the answer is you just treat it like every other linear equation. There's no reason we should do something different here. So, of course, we want to undo everything that's been done to C. So C has been multiplied by 9 over 5 and had 32 added to it. So what we're going to do is subtract 32 from both sides. We undo things opposite 
order of bod mass. So then I get 68 equals 9 over 5c. Now this is where people might think this is different. Oh, what do I do? Well, this is just 68 equals 9 over 5 times c. If it was 68 equals 2c, we'd divide by 2. 68 equals 7c, we'd divide by 7. So 68 equals 9 over 5c, we just divide by 9 over 5. So c is just 68 divided by 9 over 5, or if you like, 68 times 5 over 9. Now if you put that in your calculator, you get 37.7 recurring, so I'm just going to round it to one decimal place. So that's 37.8 degrees Celsius. So 100 degrees Fahrenheit, if you hear them talk about that on like an American TV show, they're talking about 37.8 degrees Celsius, so just a little bit more than the normal human body temperature. Now we're going to try this last one here, even though it's much, much easier. I just wanted to let you know why it's easier. And the reason is because in this case, if I know degrees Celsius, 14 degrees Celsius, it's just a simple substitution because F is the subject of the equation. I don't need to actually solve anything. So in this case, F would just be 9 over 5 times 14 plus 32. So it's just a simple substitution, no equation to solve here. And you can use your calculator again, you get 57.2. So that means 14 degrees Celsius is the same as 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so just follow these steps in all the questions and you'll be right. This has been the luckiest math teacher in the world. Have a great day.